Sam Batman Freed is facing more than a century in prison. That is, if he's convicted of everything that the US government has alleged, but it's not just his future that is now at stake. The fallout from the FTX meltdown has finally reached Congress. The US House Financial Services Committee has been listening to testimony about what happened. Its intent is to get to the bottom of what exactly went on with the world's second largest crypto exchange. FTX misused an, an approximately $10 billion in customer funds and owes creditors at least $3 billion. Today, as many as 1 million people, many of whom are here in the United States, are locked out of their FTX accounts and may recover only a fraction of their hard-earned investments, if any at all. Founder and former FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried hasn't been testifying to the panel, however. Instead, he's been dealing with an inquiry of his own. That's after his arrest in the Bahamas, where he's just been denied bail. A judge there said he's a flight risk ahead of a potential extradition to the US to face criminal charges. Those include multiple counts of securities fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, and violating campaign finance rules. If convicted, the maximum penalty would be 115 years behind bars. The timing of the arrest, though, has raised questions coming just ahead of this congressional hearing. SBF had been expected to testify there, and lawmakers said they were frustrated they weren't able to get him under oath first. Frankly, I look forward to getting his lies here on the record under oath. Um, nevertheless, the arrest of Sam bankman fried is welcome news. The man replacing SBF as FTX CEO John Ray III instead sat as the lone witness for the congressional hearing. He was crystal clear about what he believed was to blame. The FTX group's collapse appears to stem from absolute concentration of control in the hands of a small group of grossly inexperienced and unsophisticated individuals who failed to implement virtually any of the systems or controls that are necessary for a company entrusted with other people's money or assets. Ray, who is a Chicago-based lawyer who also managed the liquidation of Enron in 2001, said the FTX meltdown was a completely unique experience. He also testified that SBF transferred billions of dollars in FTX customer funds to his hedge fund, Alameda Research. The, op the operations of the XTF group were not segregated. Uh, it was really operated as one company. Uh, as a result, there's no distinction virtually uh, between the operations of the company and who controlled those operations. I'm so deeply troubled to learn how common it was for Bankman Freed and FTX employees to steal from the cookie jar of customer funds to finance their lavish lifestyles. Ray said that the scope of the current investigation into FTX is enormous. It involves detailed tracing of transfers all the way back to the founding of FTX, and it also needs complicated technological efforts to try and find and track the company's crypto assets. We're in the process of collecting and reviewing dozens of terabytes of documents and data, including billions of individual transactions. We're leveraging sophisticated technology and expertise to identify and trace additional transactions and assets. While SBF didn't appear at the hearing, Forbes released what it claimed was a copy of his planned testimony. In it, SBF took shots at Ray's management and expressed regret over, quote, giving into pressure to file for bankruptcy. All of this came as the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, announced charges against SBF personally as well. Some lawmakers have already tried to blame the SEC and its boss Gary Gensler for missing what was really going on at FTX. We know the Securities Exchange Commission Chair Gensler's regulation by enforcement approach is not going to stop bad actors. Next year, I look forward to hearing from Mr. Gensler early and often. And we'll hear from him on how we can provide clarity on the application of our securities laws to trading platforms, which he has failed to do. The hearing is just the first part of Congress's investigation into FTX. The second part of that is going to happen next year. Rest assured that this committee will not stop until we uncover the full truth behind the collapse of FTX. The bigger concern for the rest of crypto, however, is how this continues to impact the sector 
and how it informs what regulators do next. The ongoing failures of crypto firms like Terra USD, Celsius, BlockFi, and most significantly FTX and Alameda Research only serves to strengthen the importance for Congress and the public to understand the harm caused to customers. It has been a momentous 12 months for the crypto sector and it continues to be right up until the end of the year. We at Forecast have been trying our best to cover everything that's been going on and bring you the analysis that's needed on these subjects. If you like any of the content that we've put out this year, please like it, please subscribe to it and share it as well. We also want to hear your thoughts in the comments or on social media.